And the Lord said this, you can turn back anti-Semitism. You can turn back the powers of the enemy. You can overturn every scheme of hell. You can overturn every, every demonic blood covenant. You can wipe it out in an instant if you understand that you are a spiritual warrior who is also a bride that who is hidden in Christ and the Lord says it is the day to make disciples like that I am Liz Wright welcome to live your best life the only thing that matters now is living by the power of this wonderful new creation life we're going to become an undefeatable force of radiating glory And we are rising up strong now in this hour. Hi, guys. Thank you for tuning in to what is going to be a seriously empowering, extremely important episode of Live Your Best Life with, of course, Mina's right. And one of my favorite people on the planet is joining me for today's conversation. She really is an internationally loved and respected prophetic voice who has now trained many thousands of prophetic people around the nations. She's just, she's an author. She creates podcasts. She creates all different forms of media. So she's a broadcaster. She's a very powerful woman of God. And you are going to be transformed today by today's conversation. I have no doubt. It, I am, it has, I have the pleasure of having with me the one and only Emma Stark. Emma, welcome. Oh, thank you, my friend. What a gloriously positive and happy introduction. I hope I can live up to it. But I send <laughs> warrior fiery glory greetings to all of the listeners here from my house in Glasgow in Scotland. God is on his throne and he is ruling and reigning in the midst of his enemies and we are standing with him on Mount Zion encountering his glorious weight that we might be those who lead and shape the destiny of thousands together these are serious days but boy is God on the march (laughs) amen (laughs) 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 <laughs> what an amazing start to the conversation. Gosh, you could I can feel the weighty glory, heavy presence of Holy Spirit moving already. So just be expectant. Okay, so Emma, let's dive in deep. Talk to us. What is Jesus showing you right now? What is in your powerful spirit? What time is it? Oh my, there's 101 ways to answer that. Let's start. <laughs> Yeah. With I know there's because isn't it a speeding up time? Isn't yeah. it the sense, listeners, that everything is happening at once and we are making fast paced decisions? We are uber responsive to the suddenlies of God. This is not a time for I'm going to treble, quadruple, 16 time check. This is God speaks, I obey. God says, I am there. God pulls me up. I'm present in his throne uh, room. So there is this this moment of figuring out how I am instantly obedient, how I'm instantly present with him, how I move with what he is saying. And the overarching thing is we are shifting from being spirit-filled to being spirit-led. This is massive. And Liz, we have come to the front of churches. We've had moments of the infilling of God. We've have, we've had moments of I've touched him, he's touched me, and that the, the beauty of that altar. But now it is the leadership of the spirit that is dominating this era. I don't touch him just at an altar. I am compelled to live under his uh, lordship. I am led by the spirit with every fiber of my being. I am moving from a moment of encounter to a lifestyle of encounter. I am in continuous encounter with the spirit of God. He is 
making my flesh take a back seat. He is the one who I am meeting every morning, every evening in the watches of the night. And this whole shift from the temporiness of I'm filled by the Spirit and I leak to the sustaining Spirit-led life is, I think, the overarching saving grace of this moment, a lifestyle yeah. of continuous ongoing encounter. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. I love it. My spirit, listening to what you're saying then, Emma, my spirit is just leaping in agreement. And I'm sure you guys are feeling the same thing. Is that you may not be experiencing what Emma just said yet, yeah. but you're in fullness consistently, but your spirit is witnessing. It's like, yeah, this is who I am. I was born for this hour. Yeah. There is a massive shift. Before Emma and I jumped on live with you guys, we we were just talking, is that, and we're both in agreement at the moment. We're feeling this massive shift as, prof as prophets into yes. this position where we're living from encounter continually and we're yes. reigning as a consequence of the, the depth of intimacy that we now find ourselves experiencing continually. And the world yes. is going to completely shift because of this, because we're waking up. Holy Spirit is putting us in position. So I wanted to ask you, Emma. Yes. It was something that I heard you say recently, and I thought that is profound because you know I'm obsessed with governance. It's what I've been living. I've been yeah. living as a prophet, you know, I'm living yeah. the journey of us transitioning into yes. governance, into a bridal walk, into understanding our identity, understanding the authority we have, reigning from above, reigning from above, yeah. ruling and reigning. And these words are scary for some of us. But I, yeah. I want to ask you, Emma, because I think your definition of governance is one of the most profound that I have heard. Will you talk to us about the difference between what is un unhelpful leadership and governance understanding and actual where we're going now, true kingdom governance? Yes, absolutely. That's a rich and, and marvellous question. Um, I think that um, let me let me contextualize it within the prophetic movement. We're in Ezekiel 37. It's mm. the prophesying over the army, the, the, the dry bones scripture. And so we stand in the word of God and we understand because of its truth. Now, in that, there are three breaths that Ezekiel is asked to prophesy and He's developing in stature, he's growing in authority, and he's journeying as he prophesies fresh breath three times. Listeners, you need to stay with me and you need to understand this. I think the prophetic and the apostolic understood for years the first breath were in Ezekiel 37, the early verses, verses three to, um, uh, sorry, verse uh, 37, 7 to 8. And it is that sense of let's minister to the individual. That's the first breath. Let's speak to the bones. Let's speak to the, to the one. Let's create perhaps a, a personal culture. Let's be in 1 Corinthians 12. Let's have individual demonstrations of the kingdom of God. Let's prophesy in the earth. Let's focus on releasing the gold. So we've had all that. We've had all that, Liz. Mm. Fine. We have missed weight. By the second breath, you're now down in Ezekiel 37 verse 10, and suddenly it's more weighty. And suddenly what's being asked to come out of Ezekiel's mouth is not just about an individual who's got skin on. He's asking an army to stand up. And you move from the individual blessing to the creating of an army. And we've been there for years. We've talked about the ecclesia or ecclesia. We've talked about apostles and prophets with teeth. We've talked about nations and army readiness. We've talked about Ephesians 4 and the offices of the fivefold. We've spent years in celebrating the purpose of nations. Oh, it is still shallow waters. And suddenly, we hit the third breath. Mm. 
and we move into the weight of governance of Ezekiel 37, and now you're in the end of the chapter, and you're in verse 13 and 14, and he starts to breathe, and he starts to speak, and he starts to talk about latter days and end times. And rather than people as individuals, and rather than armies or nations, the whole focus is bridal readiness. The whole focus is the kingdom of God. We're up so high that we're actually governing for the kingdom of God. We are understanding revelation. Now, you've got to work with me. We go from Corinthians to Ephesians to Revelation. We go from individuals to nations to the kingdom. We go from, can I bless you as an individual? Can I speak to you as an army? To can I prepare you to be a bride who co-reigns with Christ? And so the whole understanding is shifting. I'm not so interested in a, an individual political party. I'm not so in interested in an individual political leader. I'm not fixated by a moment. I am interested in governing to make the bride ready. And I'm interested in standing in God in God, in God, not on the earth. And I am doing things that secure the future. I am not bothered by how can I massage an ego. I'm not even bothered about securing a, a little bit of a time for a church. I am interested in securing the future for the kingdom of God. And these are massive changes. Massive, Emma. Massive. The weight of the spirit on your words is it's yeah. profound. I'm sure you guys are aware this shift is happening now and we are all being invited to take our position into this change of expression and experience of life. Yes. We are being made ready for the return of Christ, being made ready, being invited into this experience of being able to truly co-reign with him. Do you know, Emma, I that's the definition of reigning. You've just articulated in the most perfect way. That is reigning, isn't it? And it's the invitation. It's the reigning bride. It's the reigning yes. bride where we truly are connected into the reality that we are seated. Ephesians 2, 6, yes. we are seated with Christ in heavenly places. We, When he ascended, we ascended with him. This is the yes. gospel. And this aspect of the truth is is being incarnated now. We we are stepping into this experience. You know, a while back, I Jesus spoke something to me that was shocking and profound. And he said to me, when when I began this journey of, you know, him beginning to share with me what you're talking about, where we're moving into now. And he said to me, you know, the future is bright, you know. And of course, there's like war and rumors of war and terrible things going on in the earth and all the suffering and pain, which is very real in the natural realm. And um, And then he said, because we co-create it together. Yeah. And he shifted me internally into realizing all over again, he is sovereign. He is Alpha and Omega. Our job to change this realm, to bring the kingdom on earth is to walk in intimacy with him. It's not a job. It's a privilege, yes. right? But And to get yeah. divine perspective and begin to learn, which is the invitation from the Holy Spirit right now, learn as he leads us into all truth, how to do this how to stay in this in this place of awareness, being seated with Christ and starting to co-reign with him. It's just profound yes. what you've shared. But this is it, isn't it? This is it. It's it, the it, future. It, it it's about it. the future. It, it, it is. And I think we, we've, we've been in this, you know, um, I received a prophetic word and I was comforted. Grand, that's stage one. I don't want to knock that. Um, it's, it's a good thing to do, but right now it's not super strategic. So the sense of like, I can, I can encourage you and then I can move into like, I can encourage a church, but right now we are being asked to move in, um, signs and wonders in nations and in atmospheres. And the Lord said this, you can turn back anti-Semitism. You can turn back the powers of the enemy. You can overturn every scheme of hell. You can overturn every, every demonic blood covenant. You can wipe it out in an instant if you understand that you are a spiritual warrior who is 
also a bride that, who is hidden in Christ. And the Lord says, it is the day to make disciples like that. It is a day to make disciples like that. You can feel the urgency. Sorry, I'm walking around now because the Lord is saying, we are playing a game in the shallow waters. We are playing a game of pandering to egos. And the Lord is saying, I need you to come up to the military minded strategic place where you reach up into the heavenlies and you say, I receive the strategy for this R. I receive the blueprints for this R. I receive the understanding that I can reign in the midst of the enemies. I receive the understanding that I am not subject to the spirit of the age. And the Lord says, if we can train people like that, we will push back the schemes of hell in this day. Absolutely. Absolutely. Amen, Emma. You know, where I've been living in the spirit, some of the encounters I've been having is that place touching into guys, the place yes. we're being invited to live from consistently. We already do, but to be fully awake to this reality. And it's 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 up in heaven. It's in a place of stillness. It's in a place I've been so connected to the purity and the holiness and the power and the authority of who we are as those that are predestined to reign, where that's being resolved now. So where we've not been able to, we're being invited to be able and equipped and empowered to be able to. Do you know when you were speaking then, Emma, because my spirit can is fully in agreement with what you're saying because of what I'm living. I mean, it's all over the word yes. of God. But I, it's, it's, it's time, it's time right now. And I just, I could feel as like coming in agreement. It was like a, an arc in the spirit while you were speaking and I was agreeing. I'm like, yes, I'm living from here right now for us, pulling us into this position in agreement with the Lord's heart for us to mobilize and to get in position. As you said, it's, it, we're the bride in the book of Revelation. It's who we are. It's how human history wraps up. And it's, yes. and this is the truth that we're stepping into the realization of. I wanted us to come in agreement, Emma, right now with the power of what you've just said. Will you just call us into position, into what you've seen right now? Because I feel the weight of the spirit on it. Yeah. Come holy, up. Holy, holy. Come up, come up, come up. In the name of Jesus, wherever you are, whatever time zone you are in, I release the ability to be the come up here first responder. The come up here first responder. I release that ability to you in the name of Jesus. Can I just get practical, uh, Liz, um, about Amen. this yes. in terms of how? Because I know yeah, that, that was probably, my next question. Yeah, how? you and I are probably <laughs> asked the, th the same question a lot. Um, so, um, <laughs> Amen. <laughs> I, I can talk through how I, I can talk through my, my own personal uh, uh, ways to give top tips and how we're doing yeah. it practically. Yeah, um, super powerful. I like to um, come to a place where I'm on the floor. Now, that's a place of, of lowness. It's a place of surrender. It's a place of submission. I would not be sitting on a chair. Um, is my own personal preference because I think I've got to work with my physical body and put it in the right posture to allow my spirit to connect with Christ. I don't take a lofty physical position. I take a lowly physical position, acknowledging that I have a king. So these little top tips are just super helpful. So I literally will sit on the floor. But then what I will have to do is the only way I enter in biblically is by thanksgiving. I enter his courts with thanksgiving. I enter his courts with praise. Now, you and I misread that as I've got to sing a happy, clappy kind of song. Nonsense. That is not what it says in scripture. So how do I enter in? I always enter in through thanksgiving. So I'm sitting on the floor. I'm in a, in, I'm in a submitted posture to a king and my position will change in a minute, but I go in that way. Jesus, you are everything. And without you, I am nothing. Jesus, you have done all things well. Jesus, you rule and reign. I thank you. And I will start to come in with thankfulness because it's biblical, okay? I do not want to do anything that is not in the word of God. So suddenly I am in by gratitude. Now, because I'm used to it, it's very fast. 
then I'm saying, what do you want me to see about what you are doing today, God? What are you up to? Rather than I've got this list, leave that out. Now, what I find happens is that you tend to go somewhere you've been before. Oh, I remember when I had an encounter five years ago, I had this dream. And so you tend to only go to a level that you've been at before. You must hold yourself to a higher standard and say, Jesus, can I ascend? Jesus, you lead me. I don't go by myself. I'm not a Gnostic. I don't create my own encounters. Jesus, can you lead me higher? And higher. Can I come up my Zion where you rule and reign from? Can I go beyond where I've been before? Can I enter in to some of the scriptures? Can I experience the throne room that I read about in Revelation? Can I be with you where you rule and reign? Can I see the seat that I sit on in Ephesians? Can I go to, can I springboard off scripture to come into encounter. Can I do something like, and um, the name of the Lord is a strong tower, the righteous run into it and they are saved. Can I come into the tower? Uh, can I walk into the name of the Lord? Okay. Using that scripture. So can I walk into the name of God? So I'm using these scriptures and I'm suddenly inside his name or I'm inside his throne, or I'm in his garden, or I'm in the, the thick, dark cloud that he dwells in, or I'm suddenly aware, Liz, that, oh my goodness, I'm standing in green. Why am I standing in green? Thick green. Because his throne is circled by a rainbow that is also green. So if I'm with him, I'm standing in a thick, dark green cloud. That's what scripture says he lives in. So I'm on really biblically robust grind and I'm in that encounter. Now I'm on my feet. Why? Because holiness has a rhythm. Holiness has a rhythm. And it's not fast paced like war and it's not super slow, but holiness has a standard. The atmosphere of heaven has a holy standard. And I often find that I'm clapping. This is weird, I know, but I'm I'm in the rhythm of holiness and I, my whole being is starting to collide with the rhythm and the atmosphere and the culture of holiness. Now, I'm now in Galatians 5.25. I'm always in the scripture. Since we live by the spirit, let us keep in step with the spirit. Okay. So now I'm in step. I'm in Galatians. I'm in the rhythm of atonement. Suddenly my whole being is with him in step and in pace at, with Galatians 5.25. I am now the embodiment of that scripture. I am in step with the spirit. Now I am there. Jesus, I know that I might have brought pain in here. I know that I might have brought my own conflict in here, but in you there is no hope. And suddenly when I acknowledge that, I'm well, and I am physically well, and I am emotionally well, because I'm in the atmosphere where there's no harm, though I might have come in wounded. Yeah. So suddenly once I've done that, Jesus, I've brought my pain in, but in you there is no harm. Now I'm able to steward weight because I'm with him where he is. It's going to take you a few minutes and now the possibilities are limitless. Can I see the map room? What are the principalities you're pushing back? Where can I come into agreement with how you're ruling? And then I don't know about you. You're then in 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 the bit the the business of heaven. And at that point, I am disinterested by the usual standards of the kingdoms of this world. I'm disinterested. I'm disinterested by their success ratings. I am disinterested. So what I wrestled with or thought was important suddenly is not important. Because now I'm able to say, right, 
I can speak life over Europe from here and it will hold. I can null and void something Satan did and it will hold because of positionally where I am. Just brilliant, Emma. Just brilliant. Thank you for languaging your internal world because it's just (laughs) power packed keys, right? It helps us because we all need the why. We need the why. Yeah. And my my life internally is very similar to yours, you know. Yes. And it, it and and it's that place, isn't it, where you go in through the word, you begin to encounter him. It's a yes. doorway. It's escorting you into the experience yes. of who he is. Yes. And then one, we're back in that place of oneness with his heart, yes. one heart, yes. Yes. one mind, and then we become that conduit of the sound of the intention of his will, of his heart. And it's like you said, it's from there where we see everything. Everything sits in the context of divine perspective from there. Yes. We have that heavenly vantage point and we can come in agreement with the creator, the king's heart. And it's when he speaks, like you said, then the natural changes. Everything comes into conformity with the counsel of his will when we know his will yes. and we agree with his will and it's released through us, his body his bride. I, I think one of the, t- the most terrifying verses um, when Moses is asked to go to Pharaoh and you see a fascinating biblical terminology where it says this, see I have made you as God to Pharaoh. And you'd be like, no, 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 surely not. Um, that is worth sitting in that you are made to partake, that let's go New Testament concept, you are made to partake of the divine nature. Yeah. That, but the Old Testament, see, I have made you as God in this situation. And now that's not grandeur above your station. That is that place where I am speaking as the divine, partaking in the divine nature, or as a represent, if you're more happier with the terminology as a representative, but what of God, um, uh, you know, as a proxy, but actually, actually, what Moses is told is you are the God to Pharaoh, or you are as God to Pharaoh, depending on your translation. But it, there's no denying the scriptural weight in that. That as I am in that place of, we would call it, 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 well, the Greek word is homothumadon. When I'm in the place of oneness, when I'm in the place of oneness, I have a weight to command. And you, listen, listeners, my friends, you will need to know this in the days of economic collapse, when allies stop backing allies, We are seeing seismic cracks under NATO in the spirit. We are seeing some uh, uh, ally-to-ally relationship simply not holding. And uh, we're seeing economic shiftings at a level that is in the natural terrifying. You must know how to be in God to be able to speak his kingdom over these situations. This is not Liz and I playing in girly, silly waters. No, <laughs> no, we don't have that. Those days are not here. <laughs> no. And what you've just said, Emma, is hugely important. And we'll just finish with this. I, I encourage you to meditate on that scripture. Um, yeah. It, and also Jesus says in the New Testament, as you well know, Emma, he says, you are gods on earth. Yes. Yes. And, it, and, you know, you look at Galatians, you look at Romans, you look at this, the actual pure, powerful gospel, what the finished work of Jesus on the yes. cross actually accomplished. No longer I, the Adamic nature lives, but it's Christ yeah. that lives in me. You know, you just, I encourage you, sit in these scriptures and meditate on the truth that we are partakers of the divine nature, that it is no longer I that lives, but it's Christ. The divine nature now is our nature, the authority that we have. Jesus isn't coming back for an unequally yoked bride who's a mess. <laughs> he's, you know, he's 
He's coming back to be with his bride, who is his restored, perfected image and is co-reigning with him. So these are the days that we're in. Emma, thank you. You are a powerhouse woman. You are a massive blessing to the body of Christ. The truth you shared today is literally transformational. Guys, listen to it over and over. Soak in these truths. This is the gospel. What a privilege. Yes. Yeah. Emma, thank you. Pleasure. Bless you guys. Thank you for giving us your time as well today. And we just pray you have the most profound week and encounters with Jesus beyond anything you imagine possible. Thank you. Thank Look you. forward to being with you next you. week. God bless. Amen. Bye. Two years ago, Jesus spoke to me and he said, if I would create a space for him, he would come. And what he has done in the last two years is absolutely incredible. He birthed what is now known as the International Mentoring Community. Every week, myself, along with other international guest speakers, come on live and they pour in God's love and revelation. There is an activation anointing on my life. And so every single week, as we come together at the feet of Jesus, I have an environment in which I can impart this anointing onto you. He never, ever misses a week with us. He wants to take you into deeper experiences with him than you thought was even possible. So I want to personally invite you now to come and join us and sit at his feet with us.